But this time of year in Cornwall, springtime is fantastic. The sun's starting to shine, it's starting to warm up a bit. And I tell you what, the ingredients are starting to get fantastic as well. And it gives us so much flexibility to what we can put on the menu. And today I've got a recipe that encapsulates springtime for me. And there's only one thing for it. It's me, the fish man, so I need to go and get some fish. Morning, right. Nathan. How are you? Cool, yeah. I'm after some turbot. Have you got any turbot? Yeah. Coming around oh, the back. Cool. Look, I'll show you what we've got today. Cheers. All right. There you go. Got a nice, decent sized turbot there. That's perfect for what I need. I just want a couple of steaks off it. Box it up and I'll take the whole thing. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Cheers. No Thanks problem. There you okay. go. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Nice one. Take Cheers. care. Take care. Now, I've got a lovely spring kitchen recipe for you. Turbot with bacon, peas, and they're all cooked in ale. So the most important ingredient is the turbot we've picked up this morning. Ale, very, very important ingredient. Some lovely, lovely peas, some bacon, and then there's a few shallots, rosemary, and garlic in there as well, just to bring it all together. I think it's a beautiful spring kitchen recipe. Now, the first thing we need to do is to grill the bacon. A lovely smoke streaky bacon. I'm gonna get that nice and crispy. Now the next thing we need to do is get a pan nice and hot. Put some rapeseed oil in there, just some light rapeseed oil. A little bit of butter. Okay, so once the uh, butter's starting to melt and starting to bubble, we've got some whole shallots that we've already peeled. I'm cooking this for two people. I'm allowing for about sort of five shallots each. And then it looks a bit strange cooking whole garlic cloves, but trust me, once they're cooked, they'll be lovely. Whole garlic cloves in there as well, about three a portion. A little bit of rosemary as well. Okay, so once you've got a little bit of colour on the shallots and on the garlic, next thing we need to add to that is some red wine vinegar. It's important to add vinegar to things just for acidity. So the vinegar goes in and we just reduce that down so almost there's nothing left at all. Okay, so the bacon's done. What we'll do, we'll just leave that to one side to let it cool down and then we'll chop through that later. I've made some fish stock with the turbot bones. But a little tip for getting a lovely flavour for your fish stock is to actually roast the bones. And what you'll get is a lovely flavourful roasted fish stock opposed to that sort of boiled fish stock. Now, once the fish stock comes to the boil, next thing we're going to do is add the ale, obviously one of the most important ingredients of this braising liquor. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is season the turbot steaks. And all we're going to do now is pop this the turbot straight into the stock. If you haven't got turbot and you can't afford it, because it is quite expensive, a piece of hake will work perfectly in here as well. It's perfect for white fish. Now, I'll cover it with foil, and I'm just going to let that tick over for about 10 minutes, and I know that that will cook the fish just right. If it's a little bit thinner than my fish, you know, obviously take it a bit less. If it's a whole fish, it's going to take a bit longer. Okay, so whilst that's cooking, the next thing we need to do is to chop the parsley and just chop through this bacon. Now, don't waste that. That's flavour on that tray. That's going to go in there at the end as well. So it's quite rough. The finer you chop them, the more the essential oils and the flavour goes into the chopping board. And you're better off having that in your pan. And then with the bacon, all we're going to do is just cut across the rasher and we'll sprinkle that over the top at the end. Now the turbot's been cooking for about eight to 10 minutes. So I'm going to remove the foil. And then we've got this bacon tray, and as I said before, there's flavour on there. It may look like a dirty tray to you, but it's not. There's all the flavour from the bacon. So let's take that out. And that's the good thing about fish on the bone, and turbot in particular. It actually rests like a piece of meat. You know, a lot of people probably have cooked turbot, served it straight away, and thought, that's actually quite tough. Well, it's because it needs to rest like a piece of meat. And that, that's the answer to that. Now, whilst that's resting, when we get this to the boil, then we need some richness in there. So a nice piece of butter will do the trick. A little bit of butter. Okay, so once the uh, butter's all incorporated, we're going to add the fresh peas to it. All we need to do now is just peel the turbot. And the reason why I do that is the skin's not very nice to eat. It's all right if it's crisped up, but we're just going to remove the skin. Then what we do is just pop the, the turbot back in.
and then all important, all them juices that are on there, the bacon fat and any of them sort of resting juices from the fish goes in there as well. And then the last thing we do is add the parsley and then give it a stir. And that's it. All we're gonna do now is just plate it up. A lovely turbot. And you have to swim around a little bit for the uh, for the shallots. So a few spoonfuls of that lovely braising liquor. Oh, looks lovely. And then we'll finish the whole thing off with some crispy bacon. So there you have it. That's my lovely braised turbot in beer with peas, shallots and bacon. Now I can't